I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 69. Nice. Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue. Released in 1999, this game was developed by Traveler's Tales and published by Activision. The Toy Story movies are quite popular, so it makes sense that there are video games about them as well. It's just kind of the thing people did back then. You know, for all the movies I tell y'all that I haven't seen, I have seen the first two Toy Story movies, and they're fantastic. I've still never seen the newer ones though. I definitely had this game as a kid, although I can't remember if I had it for the end. 64 or the PlayStation. Either way, I really enjoyed it back then, so let's see if it's held up. The game features a single player story mode, so we will complete that to beat this game. It gives some lore to start, which actually follows along the movie plotline pretty well. Andy is left to go to cowboy camp for the summer. His mom is hosting a yard sale, and Woody got taken by a toy collector named Al. For the gameplay, it's a 3D platformer. It's just what you did back then, you know? Wanna make a game about a popular movie? Slap a platformer on it. You play as Buzz Lightyear and the physics are surprisingly really good. Pressing jump in midair allows for a double jump and climbing ledges feels really smooth. And of course, Buzz has his signature laser beam to shoot bad guys with. It even offers a great first person view for aiming, although you awkwardly see a reflection of his face in the glass. So this first level is escaping Andy's house to try to chase down Al. Rex gives tutorials on all the game's mechanics throughout, and it's a nice intro to the game. I headed into the attic and found an evil robot, which I guess is the first boss of the game. It just charges at you, then eventually gets tired, and you shoot it. Repeat the process till it's dead. For killing it, it gives a Pizza Planet token, which is the main goal of this game. There are five Pizza Planet tokens in each level, and you have to get a certain amount of them to unlock the next one. Since I was familiar with this game already, I decided I'd get all of them to 100% the game. This first level is massive. You essentially get to explore most of the house. Like here, I made it down to the living room and got launched across the entire place by the rocking chair. Down in the basement, I found Mr. Potato Head. He's missing his ear and wants us to find it for him. In return, he unlocks a new ability for you to use. He shows up in most levels from now on. Another recurring character is Ham, the piggy bank. In every level, he'll give a Pizza Planet token in exchange for 50 coins. We need these things to rescue Woody. Why is he making us pay for them? I got a third token from beating RC in a race around the car in the garage, and a fourth from returning all five of Bo Peep's lost sheep to her in the kitchen. This is a recurring goal in each level where you'll need to collect five of something and bring it to another character. And and finally, the last one was from exploring the basement. Both the basement and garage have great platforming challenges. I'm being very serious when I say the physics in this are really good, like it's not a meme. This is one of the rare instances of a game based on a movie actually not being jank. After exploring all of Andy's house, Buzz and the gang leave to further pursue finding Woody. Buzz saw Al's license plate when he left and realizes he's the guy who owns Al's toy barn, so they decide to head there. Level 2 is Andy's neighborhood. The first thing I noticed here is there's just a lawnmower rolling around the yard on its own. I can only imagine the carnage if Buzz got ran over by it. The music here is intense. The snare drum is just going crazy the whole time. The game features many songs from the movies as well as some originals I believe. Like level 1 it was playing You Got a Friend in Me. Along with that they also had all the original voice actors from the movie to read lines in the game which I think is awesome. The main thing you probably remember from this level is climbing this massive tree. There's a lot of stuff you need up there and falling really sucks. It takes forever to get back up. RC is back in this level too and he wants another race. You're supposed to come back to this level level after unlocking a power up to move faster, but I realized you can beat it anyway by just standing in front of him every time he attempts to pass. Otherwise, you have zero chance of catching up. Over in someone else's yard, they had a pool and a weird air pump attached to a rubber ducky. There's a token above the ducky, and I think you're supposed to use it to reach it somehow, but I was able to just barely grab it by swinging from a pole from over above. Far into the tree, there was a wooden platform with an evil kite ready to kill us. It's really easy. Just shoot it 
it and then it starts spinning towards you. Run away and repeat. Finally, I had to recover five lost army men and bring them back to their general. This level was really fun, aside from the part where if you fell from the tree, you just took so long to get back up. Level 3 is called Bombs Away, and it's quite different. It's just a pure boss fight. There's this toy airplane flying around someone's yard and Buzz has to blow it up for some reason. Basically, it just kind of chaotically flies around while shooting machine guns at you and it tries to dive into you. It's honestly incredibly easy. It blows up in a fiery explosion and Buzz flies away. We get a lore update now. Woody is trapped in Al's penthouse apartment and he meets three new friends. Jesse the cowgirl, Bullseye who's Woody's horse, and an old prospector in his box. Level 4 is the construction yard. I can't remember if this is in the movie but well, we're here and a big building's being built. In this level we learn just how strong Buzz really is as he's somehow able to push a cinder block. Those things are really heavy. Instead of racing RC, this level has us collect 5 wrenches under a time limit for Slinky. Also new to this level is the first puzzle of the game, and it is a tough one. Let me explain. So there's this empty can and 3 dispensers for red, yellow, and blue paint. Now there's slots on the wall that are colored orange, green, and purple. Now the hard part, you've got to figure out how to use those paint dispensers to match the paint can to the colors on the wall. This was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I think I spent at least 5 hours on this puzzle alone. But I did eventually solve it and earned a Pizza Planet token. The main thing you may remember from this level is once again you have to climb something. This time it's the big building under construction. What's with the level designers loving these huge vertical climbs? It's so annoying when you fall and have to climb back up. Finally, once getting to the top, the boss of this level shows itself. It's a sentient jackhammer that's going to mess us up. It doesn't really deal much damage health-wise, but the biggest threat is just getting pushed off the building and having to climb back up. It can't be damaged with Buzz's laser. Mr. Potato Head needs his eye recovered to give us the disc launcher, which is capable of harming stronger enemies. Real cool, man. Guess you don't want Woody to be saved, huh? You can just keep that to yourself. But yeah, that's about all that's going on in this level. Now we learn Woody understands he was part of an old TV show called Woody's Roundup, and he's Al's missing piece of a valuable toy collection from the show. Al plans to sell this collection to a Japanese museum. Level 5 is Alleys and Gullies. This one I don't remember too much playing as a kid, but I sure remember it from playing through on this challenge. I think I got more frustrated with this than any other level, so it's a very narrow level as you might expect. In one alley there's a bunch of fruit stands and these big robots with shields. You can't hurt them without the disc launcher and and they easily bonk you to knock you off the ledge. And then over at a sewer drain, Slinky wants us to collect five bones for him. Hopefully these are like chicken bones or something, not human remains. Kind of weird, they're washing through the sewer, but whatever. There's platforms flowing along the water that you use to move around. I think it's a clear nod to the Frogger games. I thought it was pretty cool. A lot of this level can't be accessed until obtaining a power-up from Mr. Potato Head in a later level, so we'll come back to this one. And then comes the second main boss of the game. Slime Time. It's this green slime blob in a trash can. Honestly, no idea what this is supposed to be or why it's in the game, but all I know is it wants to kill us. You just keep shooting it with the laser and it goes back inside and grows in size. Do that like five times and then it explodes, Buzz flies off. Honestly, <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing to put in the game. So now we're at the point where the gang of toys have reached Al's toy barn itself. Buzz can't find Woody, but he finds a bunch of toys that look just like himself. They learn of Al's plan to sell Woody and realize they've got to stop him. This level's pretty awesome. It's like fulfilling every kid's dream of being stuck in the toy store after they close. In the sports aisle, there's spinning tires to navigate around, as well as flying basketballs and baseballs. There's even hula hoops that roll around the floor trying to run you over. Hey, it may seem unrealistic, but so is Buzz Lightyear doing all this platforming, right? I think one reason I like this one so well is they abandoned the hyper vertical climbing aspect seen in all the previous levels and they took a more open level approach with a bunch of shorter ledges to climb on. For finding Mr. Potato Head's arm, we obtained the best power up in the game in my opinion, the rocket boots. These let you move at insane speeds, which is supposed to be required for that RC race in level 2. There's a new time challenge in this one. It's neither Slinky nor RC who wants us to do something, but just some random chicken. Buzz has to take this parkour course starting with a skateboard 
skateboard ride. It looks like something out of Ninja Warrior, honestly. The toy store looks great with all the cool toys arranged neatly, but stepping into the back reveals the true story. I presume this is Al's office, and it is downright disgusting. There's some green sludge on the floor that harms you for standing on it. Dude, this guy's horrible. Further in the back, there's more slime, as well as an evil robot dinosaur. This serves as the level's boss, and I killed it in about 5 seconds. But yet again, we can't get all the tokens in this level until obtaining a power-up from a later level. So now Buzz has followed Al to his penthouse apartment to rescue Woody. However, somehow Emperor Zerg stops him. This level is Al's space land, which I think is just another section of the toy store? I don't know, it's really weird how it says Buzz made it to the apartment, but then the next level's here again. The boss here is very interesting because Buzz has to fight a clone of himself riding a moon buggy. It's really easy, and there's a unique token to obtain here by grabbing it with a claw machine. I used to be addicted to playing those things as a kid. But yeah, this level's not too different from the last one, other than it's a lot darker. You go into a ball pit to save one of five green aliens, and I don't know, I got through this level really quick. Now comes a new boss, the Toy Barn Encounter. Buzz finds himself in a moon dome with a huge flying robot. It's got a bunch of yellow pods extending off of it. Shooting one causes it to fall off and a random regular enemy comes out. The only real danger this boss poses is shooting a constant green laser but it's slow and it's pretty easy to avoid. Once the last pot has been removed, it just takes a bit more shooting the main part of the ship for it to explode. So now Buzz and the gang are climbing the elevator shafts to reach Al's penthouse apartment. This level is a complete vertical level. It's spent mostly in the air vents or the elevator shafts. At the start of the level, you have to find Mr. Potato Head's foot, so he'll give you the grappling hook power-up. This is the thing we needed to get all those tokens in the previous levels. There will be certain spots in levels where you can shoot the hook to reach new heights. The frustrating part of this level is the elevator shaft. There's two elevators moving on different cycles, so you need to wait on one to reach certain areas. I like the idea behind this section, but it's mostly waiting rather than like strategic platforming. High up in the elevator shaft, there was a puzzle where I had to ground pound switches to line up a wire. I really don't know how you're supposed to do this one. I just kind of spammed ground pounds until it said I did it. I think the wildest part of this level is when you reach the very top, there's a rat who offers you a Pizza Planet token if you can fall to the bottom of an air vent before it does. There hadn't been sliding like this in any other level, so it feels really new. It controls pretty well though. The second time I tried this, some insane glitch happened. Just all the textures in the level disappeared, and I was sliding through a black void. Truly was to infinity and beyond. Now with the grappling hook, I revisited the alleys and gullies level. With this, you can climb up all the fire escapes in one of the alleys. For some reason, this area of the game was insanely laggy compared to others. Not sure if it was due to the rain effects or what. I didn't enjoy this part of the level at all, really. If you make a mistake, you fall all the way back down. I think there's supposed to be a shortcut you can activate to get back quicker, but I never found it. When I finally did reach the top, there was a clown spinning top thing ready to fight. I killed it nearly instantly and got the final Pizza Planet token from that level. The bosses in this game, they're kind of underwhelming honestly. Moving on, the toys had finally reached Al's penthouse. Woody celebrates and gets ready to go back home with the other guys, but the prospector doesn't want to be played with. He wants to be on display, so he prevents Woody from leaving and they're gathered up by Al to be sold. This level is Al's penthouse. You get to jump around in his living room, kitchen, bathroom, and a side train room. The bathroom's really interesting because there's switches you can can ground pound to raise or lower the water level by flooding it, kind of like the water temple in Ocarina of Time. I made an unfortunate jump when the water was rising, which uh, led to a soft lock. Guess the devs never accounted for this scenario. Thankfully, there's an option to exit the level so you don't have to turn the game off and lose all your progress. The most frustrating part about this level was the train room. There was a puzzle where you needed to push a box down the entire track. However, if the train ran into the box, they'd both get stuck and you have to push it back. The way you avoid this is by switching the tracks at certain spots using a switch. I never did figure out how to solve this one. It seemed like no matter what I did, it just kept getting trapped, even though it felt like it shouldn't. Thankfully, I found out you can make an extremely tight jump to get on top of the main train anyway. It's just barely possible. I'm really glad, because it was frustrating pushing the box back over and over. The boss in this one is some gunslinger in a Wild West setting in the living room. Again, it was completely free. Now comes another main boss, but Buzz has to take on his arch-rival Emperor Zerg. He floats around the room shooting balls at you, which don't deal much damage. I don't think you can harm him with the laser, so the spinning attack is the way to go. It actually takes
takes quite a while to kill him, but it's still not too hard. So now Al drives towards the airport, and Buzz and the gang steal a Pizza Planet truck to chase him. They find themselves in the luggage sorting area looking for Woody. This level's a ton of conveyors and suitcases and the like. We get Buzz's final power up here, the hover boots. They let him jump much higher, which is great when there's not a grappling hook spot available. Using these, I was able to climb up to the boss of this level, the Prospector. Kinda weird, cause I imagine he would be the final boss of the game. I think they do fight him in this location in the movie, so I guess it kind of makes sense. There was this room with a plane under construction or something like that, and you had to use the wings of it as a seesaw platform. It just, it felt really weird. The best way I found was to wait on it to stabilize by standing on one end, but it just, it was so much time waiting. Overall though, the level was pretty enjoyable. Now it's the final level of the game, the airport runway. This level is just not very good honestly. It's mostly flat and open, so most of your time Time is spent running around. The center of the level is where most of the action is. Slinky's here and he wants you to run along this path without touching anything green or no jumping. It's really simple, but it's at least something unique they haven't used yet. The thing that sucks about this level so much is the plane. It moves in a circle around the level very slowly, and you need to use it to reach anything high up in the level. There's a ton of waiting due to this, and it's just not fun to do. Using the plane, I climbed on top of a building where a random blacksmith was waiting and he was not friendly. That's okay though, we won his Pizza Planet token anyway. There was also some light puzzle where, well, <laughs> I'm not really sure what you needed to do. I think you needed to turn all the lights off or something, but I just kind of pressed buttons randomly until it said I got it. But yeah, that's about it for that level. I'd collected all 50 Pizza Planet tokens, and it gives you an image just saying congrats for getting them all. Kind of underwhelming. Now it's time for the final boss of the game, which actually did turn out to be the Prospector. Really strange, because we fought him earlier, but whatever. You're in a luggage car, and the Prospector shows up out of a suitcase, but he's brought the Gunslinger and Blacksmith with him. This is actually kind of hard, mostly because it's three bosses at once, but still. It's nice for something to actually be a bit challenging. The Gunslinger shoots out at you, the blacksmith sends a blue energy wave at you, and the prospector hits the ground to send a spark at you. This was actually the only time I died in the entire game, I think. It's super forgiving when you die, apparently, as the bosses were in the state they were just before I died. I thought I'd have to start all over, you know? After that death, it didn't take much longer to take down the prospector, beating this game's final challenge. It zooms in on Woody's face, and... <laughs> That is, a uh, not an accurate model. My god, that is cursed. We get some final lore saying that Buzz and the gang made it back safely to Andy's house, and they all promise to remain friends forever. Then the credits roll, game complete. So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating Toy Story 2, Buzz Lightyear to the rescue. I had quite fond memories of playing this as a kid, and I fully expected to have those memories shattered with this playthrough. That couldn't be further from the truth, though. I think this game holds up really well, honestly. The physics themselves are just great. It's really impressive for the time. The level design was generally good, and nothing was too tough, so it's not surprising I liked this as a kid. If you're looking for a 3D platformer to check out on the N64, this might be worth looking into. I liked the music as well, and the graphics were okay. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10 for enjoyability, and a 2.5 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. There are 322 games on the list. Could be any of them. We shall see what we get. Three, two, one, go. 180. What's that? We are playing MRC Multi Racing Championship. Whatever that is. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.